1695. Serena, you're up again. House Bill 1695 defines affordable housing for the use of surp surplus public property. As background, any state agency or local government may transfer, lease, or dispose of surplus property if the purpose is for a public benefit. A deed, lease, or other instrument transferring surplus property must include a requirement that the property will be used for the designated public benefit purpose and remedies if the property is not used for that purpose. Public benefit means affordable housing for households at or below 80% of the county median income in related facilities. The bill before you specifies that for a public benefit pur purpose, affordable housing includes both rental housing and permanently affordable home ownership. And affordable housing means for rental housing, 30% of the household's monthly income for rent and utilities other than telephone. And for permanently affordable home ownership, 38% of the household's monthly income for mortgage taxes, insurance, and fees. And the total ho household debt does not exceed 45% of the monthly household income. Happy to answer questions. Any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, Vice Chair Alvarado. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Peterson, Ranking Member Clicker, members of the committee. Really nice to be seating here today. Emily Alvarado in the 34th Legislative District. Um, across the state, there are small parcels of publicly owned property. Some of them sit vacant or with chain link fences or as parking lots. Um, and they're not being used. And in many of these same communities where those public properties sit, it's also pretty impossible for modest income earners like artists and preschool teachers and health, mental health counselors and caregivers to be able to buy their own home. And it's increasingly hard to find land to develop affordable homeownership options on. Under current law, you are allowed to dispose of public property that is surplus at no cost for affordable housing. And in fact, there are incredible examples across the state of turning parking lots into housing for those who, whose needs are not met by the market. In fact, one of my uh, highest points of um, in my profession was helping to turn a parking lot in the center of Seattle into housing for people experiencing homelessness. But some jurisdictions believe that uh, under current law, there's not clarity that you can use those properties for permanently affordable homeownership. So this bill fixes that problem, making it clear that surplus land can be used for permanently affordable homeownership for low-income households. Permanently affordable home ownership is really unique. It allows people to gain the equity of a home and to have those ties to communities and schools and also to do things like collateralize against your home and get those benefits. But it balances those individual benefits with community stability. So upon resale, the next home buyer is also low income and gets an affordable home price. So in that case, we would have um, public land that's used for public good for generations to come. And I might say that now's a really important time to pass this law. Our committee did move forward on things like missing middle, and so it would be great to be able to unlock some of the potential for new development in, um, in various communities where there are small public parcels to be able to make actionable our goals of affordable housing. Please vote yes, happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Representative Entman? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for bringing this bill forward. I just have one question. How do we um, guarantee that one low income uh, homeowner will sell it to another considered low income homeowner? How do we guarantee that it won't become market rate housing? Yeah, really good question, and I know that there are some land trust folks who might be testifying who could give more information, but under this bill, you would need to have a regulatory requirement that permanently restricts the use of the land. Under a permanent affordability model, what happens is the homeowner owns the home, but a land trust association owns the land, and they do the operationalizing of the laws upon successive um, uh, home purchase to make sure that the home buyers are low income. And there's also, because it's a regulatory agreement, the public has an opportunity to enforce those agreements. Representative Hutchins. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Alvarado. Good to see you. Um, I'm curious if there's anything in this bill that changes the operation of how developers are selected, what the mechanism is for the development of the property, and um, and if anything in this is, is altering what has been the case in terms of the development you were involved in um, previously. So just curious about that. Yeah, this shouldn't change any of those pieces. It just explicitly allows for the land to be disposed of for permanently affordable home ownership. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Representative Alvarado. And we have in a couple of people signed in, that, or at least one that we haven't been able to find, but let's bring in uh, Nick Federici and Kathleen Hosfeld. And Kathleen, if you are ready. Indeed, I am. Thank All you, right. Chairman. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Kathleen Hosfeld. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Northwest Community Land Trust Coalition's Washington State members. And thank you to Representative Alvarado for introducing House Bill 1695. This is just a technical fix to previously passed legislation that will open a new resource for building affordable home ownership in Washington state. The single biggest barrier to increasing rates of home ownership in our state is the lack of supply of homes that are priced within reach of everyday people. Our shared goals of increasing affordable housing for all and closing racial home ownership disparities requires that we address the supply side and build more affordably priced homes. Nonprofit developers build homes that are priced for those shut out of the for-profit market, but it takes more than state funds to bring these homes to market and other state enabled local resources that cities use for affordable housing frequently don't work for home ownership. Assuring that home ownership is one of the public benefits for which surplus land can be used will add an important tool to the resources that towns and communities use to increase home ownership opportunities for all across the state. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Next, we will bring up uh, Nick Federici. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Loud and clear. Awesome. The first time that I've testified virtually this year, so... Uh, uh, always assuming that I probably have committed a user error. Um, Nick Federici on behalf of both the Northwest Community Land Trust Coalition as well as Washington Low Income Housing Alliance here in strong support of this legislation and deep gratitude to Representative uh, Alvarado. In my 30 years in Olympia, this may have been the, the, the biggest gap between my own knowledge of a bill and my prime sponsor's knowledge of a bill uh, as, as shown by her uh, uh, extraordinarily thorough uh, intro of the bill. Um, as Kathleen said, um, this bill is a really a technical one, and I think 2019, uh, the legislature passed a, a, a statute that said um, that surplus land could be transferred at no cost uh, to a, a nonprofit uh, for rental um, uh, uh, housing. This just adds a permanently affordable home ownership uh, to that existing statute um, so that there's parity there. Um, urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Representative Entman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Federici, can you tell me who earns the equity in the home? We have talked about increasing uh, black African American home ownership and a lot of the work that we're doing. If a person buys in the land trust, who gains the equity and therefore the generational wealth? I think uh, Ms. Hosfeld has left the left the Zoom. She would be able to a answer that more thoroughly, and and it may be that uh, Riz of Alvarado can do it. I'll, I'll I'll give it a shot. Which is that it's split um, um, because the community land trust lowers the cost of of the um, upfront housing on behalf of um, the homeowner. Um, they uh, the, the the community land trust retains a piece of the equity, but a portion of the equity is also retained by uh, the homeowner as well. Okay, Kathleen. Hi. So in, in our model, the, that term shared equity is a bit of a misnomer because it makes it sound like the nonprofit community land trust 
take some of the equity at the resale of the home. That's not correct. Um, the only equity that is gained on the home is gained by the income qualified household that buys in and then ultimately resells the home. Um, so the home appreciates at a formula price that's in the agreements that the buyer signs. The home price is then calculated based on that um, that price. Community Land Trust does not receive or the permanently affordable home ownership organization does not receive its own take of that. Generally speaking, they charge a small processing fee to help find the next income qualified buyer. But the term shared equity uh, is, 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 is sort of a misnomer in this regard. The, the folks that build the equity and get the equity at resale are the homeowners exclusively. Absolutely. Follow up. Thank you. I, so a, a new buyer is buying a home for the very first time. Um, we're assuming that they have not had the opportunity to purchase before. I am not understanding the split equity. I know that you just explained it to me, but what does the land trust get out of it? And what does the homeowner get out of this type of purchase? What the homeowner receives from purchasing a community land trust home is first the opportunity to get into ownership and to build equity according to a formula price. Um, I can't speak for all community land trusts, but as an example from my organization, homeowners build equity in homeownership through our program at about $7,000 per year for every year they own the home. Um, this is not a for-profit model. The community land trust doesn't, doesn't um, doesn't judge its own benefit from the program by any in any monetary sense. The community land trusts are mission-based organizations that uh, exist specifically to create first-time home buying opportunities for people whose only other option is renting. Um, we don't pretend to be a good uh, uh, a competitor with market rate home ownership. Uh, we don't serve. Um, the people that could otherwise purchase a home through the market. We exist as a, a stepping stone potentially for up to market rate home ownership, but we, we fill that gap between what's affordable to somebody who's currently renting and um, and that first home ownership opportunity. Um, does that make more sense? Yes, thank I'm you. I'm happy to give, okay. Any further questions or insights? All right, thank you very much for educating us on that. And with that, we will close the hearing on House Bill 1695, and we will move to possible executive session. Well, we are having an, it's not possible, it's reality.